Beautiful. Is that good? Looking good. Looking good. Okay. All righty. You want to lead? Uh, you want to start the prayer? I'll finish it. Yeah, dude. I'll say uh, I'm just glad to be of service to God's people on earth. And uh, I want to be a divine channel for whatever needs to come through to be a blessing to the people who see this video. And my intention is to spread love and peace and joy and happiness and the knowledge of life. And so I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to let God flow through me in the name of the living Christ within us all. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm with you on all of that. And, uh, oop, there goes your video. Um, and, uh, yeah, just super grateful to have you, man. And I've been watching your channel for, you know, since I started my, my YouTube and, uh, you know, I really feel like you're one of the most well-respected dudes on, on the YouTube. So it's a pleasure to have you here. And I just want to be uh, of service and giving as much love and knowledge and, uh, and advice and vulnerability and truth as possible to, uh, to whoever's watching this. And, um, and, you know, to just for, for us to be authentically ourselves without any real agenda, our, our authentic selves is magical enough. I mean, we've proven that, you know, so, uh, we don't have to be anyone or try and be someone, which is, you know, constant game to, 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 to just be authentic, you know, in every moment, you know, that's it's such a, it's a, it's a real practice, you know? So. Excellent. Anyway. Yeah, awesome to have you here. Cool. Are yeah. you going to send me the this video to put up on my channel? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So make sure you plug yourself, or I'll ask you to plug yourself. So okay. I'll... Okay. I can give you a link, too, at the end, like a, a, a link to my YouTube channel that you can put in your info description. Of course. Yeah. Always. All righty. Anything else before we get started? I'm ready to rock, dude. Let's do it. No script. Hell no. All right. So we, we started already, bro. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah. Oh, was that, was that? No, no. I, I recorded all of that, but we don't, we, we, we don't necessarily. I just started recording right when we started our call. We don't have to put that on. It would be, I bet you people would enjoy that though, but we don't have Oh, I'd be very interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, to start with a prayer, yeah. Because no one ever really uh, puts up that part. I don't even know if. You know, but intention is absolutely key. To the whole it is. Thing. Well, we'll. I'll let you watch it. We can decide if we'll put that up. But I'm pretty uh, much fine with anything, man. Really, yeah, these me days. Too. Me like too. Like you said, I'm just being myself, and uh, it wasn't always easy. But now I'm just dropping more and more into this. I mean, I'm just happy, man. I'm mm. happy. I am so blessed. So whatever I'm doing, I'm going to keep doing that because it's really, really working for me. Beautiful. Beautiful. So uh, why don't we just get started with what's, what's real for us right now in this moment? You know, how, you, how are you feeling? What's real? Struggles? Anything? Anything? Dude, I am so blessed with abundance that it is crazy. In the sense of freedom, uh, relationships, health, and... Um, just this real deep connection that's getting deeper every day with the most high, you know, which is really the center of everything for me. What is and then on the side, go ahead. Well, on the side of the struggles, I uh, had a little hiking accident the other day. And uh, so my knee's been inflamed for about uh, three or four days now. And I haven't been able to walk without crutches. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just spent the whole day hiking and just went on this muddy trail after these long, big rains and had the backpack full of coconuts and kind of something in my knee just kind of popped up. So it's really been all puffy and inflamed. And so, yeah, but I've had lots of, uh, lots of uh, body workers coming over and just loving me up and it's just been great. So it's getting better, better and better. Yeah. You mentioned connection. What, what does connection feel like for you? What is it? What does it mean to you? Well, you can see through your experience the uh, the level of joy or bliss or happiness or effortlessness, grace and synchronicity. 
And sometimes we can resist even the great gifts. Like you make plans and then God laughs and sends you something else. And you, you, you might resist it. Like I'm comfortable where I'm at, but it's like, no, here's an upgrade. And you're afraid to let go of the comfort for the new level that you are actually calling in, meditating on, praying about, but uh, it's just different. It looks different. There's going to be a transition phase as these things upgrade. But I think as you get more and more in the flow of the divine, it's easier and easier just to move on, move forward into newer levels of, um, of expansion. In, in, in your finances, in your relationships, in your health. And you always have to let go of what's behind you, that comfort zone. You know, you work hard and struggle, and then you kind of like, oh, you know. But the, it's just the universe wants to constantly expand through all of us. You know, sometimes we think it's us personally. I want more money. I want a more relationship. I want better health. But that's really just God expanding. And you're just feeling that and it's manifesting itself in you in different ways and so everyone has a different way of feeling like they want to expand some people really love money some people really love relationship some people really love health some people really love uh you know getting famous on instagram or whatever it is that is expanding and i think we need to let that and we need to allow everyone to have their expansion within the context of whatever is in their heart because that's God's plan for them. And so a lot of times on the internet, especially, it's like you'll see these people that have this very narrow range that think everyone should live within the same column of consciousness and perception that they have. And you can begin to see as you evolve and grow, you don't, you don't want anybody putting their boundaries on you. You're just going along with your uh, karma and your dharma and your path. And you're just as bewildered as anyone else as, but you have to keep opening up and letting that happen. You have to let the flower of your life blossom, you know, and we should encourage others because we're all going to end up back in the same place because we all came from the same place. And so here we are all in this illusion, a beautiful illusion on earth. And, um, you know, everyone's just at a different frequency and has different perceptions and experiences but in the end of it all i think everyone wants to feel love and give love and be loved really we're all kind of desperate for love real love and understanding mm, uh -oh. totally totally so so this might be obvious to us or whoever, whoever takes care of their health but you mentioned a few things that made me think of it a lot of people think that we are generators of consciousness, but a lot of things that you said would allude to the fact that we are receivers of consciousness. We're this meat body and we're receiving some sort of signal or consciousness from wherever we came from or source creator. What do you, what do you tell, what do you say to people who think that this brain generates consciousness? Well, that is a very good and deep question. Um, and it's so multi-layered, the levels of energy and patterns and fields that are overlapping and overlapping and overlapping. One of the, one way that I, one thing I'd love to share that's been fascinating me lately and that may just give the viewer an idea of kind of what you're asking, but this thing that I'm fascinated by, and that is like how the food that you eat affects your consciousness via the you know metabolism of that particular type of food and the different microorganisms that are in the gut and then those microorganisms whatever type you're feeding you know there's the cooked food microorganisms there's the meat and animal based microorganisms and then there's the plant based microorganisms and i think that what happens is certain microbes fill up the gut according to what is eaten. And there's a diversity in there. And so you can kind of manipulate the microbiome, but, and it's, and it's ready for a diversity because we've evolved 
over the course of eons. And so those microbes are available for you to, you know, eat pure carnivore or eat pure cooked, or you can eat pure live foods. And so what I've seen observationally and in myself is how the different types of food produce different types of metabolites or molecules that then, um, and genetic expression, because all the, the microbes are continually expressing different genes, which then affect our RNA and our, the expression of our genes. And in that, in that sense, as those microbes are releasing all that genetic material and all those molecules and all that information from the food that you eat, it sends signals up into your uh, brain via the vagus nerve and the central nervous system. And so what you eat has an incredibly dramatic effect on the types of thoughts that you think. So that's one type of, that's one field or one aspect of how we can affect our consciousness by what we eat. There's another aspect of the music. There's another aspect of who are you standing in front of breathing their breath? What kind of field of energy did they have? What kind of experiences? What kind of consciousness? What kind of microbes? What kind of um, thoughts are they having? How is their heart? Is it open? Is it blocked up with sludge? And so field after field after field of information and energy that has an effect on really the, there is a receptivity, but there's also the ability to consciously decide, you know, what type of, uh, what you'd like to stand in because you can stand in love and the whole world can be filled with hate and you can as a spiritual master and being of light choose love and you can go into that room and they can hate you and hate you and hate you and you never have to choose hate you can always choose love even if they kill you because a lot of people will do that when you bring your light it shines up all their crap and they don't want to see that and they're mad as hell at you and so much sometimes that the prophets of old were so powerful that they that they did not want their racket to be messed with so they had to take them out jesus for example and many many others the truth and the light of truth has never been that well received and it's a likelihood that we would kill jesus if he came back again kind of thing you know like the truth is like really i don't want to give up this i don't want to change that i'm kind of comfortably miserable you know and yet as we evolve we realize you'll drop you as you get more evolved, you'll drop everything to experience that light, to experience that peace, that joy, that bliss that comes with the freedom of knowing that this is, this is the transient world. The, the humans right now have it backwards. We think that this artificial money-made world is reality when the reality is much more subtle and it's always there operating as a divine consciousness. So the wise man, let thy will be done, lets the divine consciousness live his life or her life for them. And then everything is just synchronicity, ease, effortless, and abundance. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What, what do you think makes people so attached to their darkness, to their funk? Well, I guess the classical way to put that is the ego. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it loves to be in control and it operates out of that. You can see the, the battle, uh, these days between, you know, the old ways of being things that don't, don't work anymore. Like the animal agriculture, it's horrific. It's one thing that consume animals, but then to be totally in denial of the, the way that these animals are treated and to be unaware and to not want to know, you know, that that is, why are we clinging to that? You know, that, that model. And why are we afraid to actually look at the way the pigs and the cows and the chickens are treated and raised? And I think if people saw that, they would never even eat it. The chickens can't stand up. The pigs are absolutely miserable and sick and the cows are sad and depressed and sick. And so why are we clinging to that model 
and why are we not doing something about you know about the the way we are treating animals in animal agriculture why are we not as uh, you know more on the vegan side of things why are we not growing our own food like what's why are we clinging back to these old ways that obviously there's no way they're going to work and yet we still cling to these um to these uh, these methods that no longer work and so if you're an individual and you see that in yourself you're doing like this is the ninth relationship of a guy that's abusing you it's like you know when is the time to cultivate love and realize you're in a pattern get out of all relationships heal yourself and get to another level and again that comes back to love people sometimes for a lot of us a crumb is better than nothing you know but really if you could just deny the crumb then the whole loaf of fresh bread could come you know yeah but you have to believe you have to love yourself enough you know and so why we do that i mean what i what i like to do in my life josh is uh I, I I don't attack the negative. I used to, but I don't attack the negative anymore. I just continually cultivate the positive because when you attack the negative, it just gets stronger. You create the opposite end of the pole for the war. That's what I learned on YouTube. If I if I defend myself on YouTube, I immediately created the war. Yes, and and you dissolve that by just you're like I'm me. God made me. Yeah. You know, talk to God. I'm just. I'm just doing what it's doing to me and for me. But yeah, I understand like defending or, I mean, I've spent 10 years on YouTube doing that. Man. <laughs> and I'm really work just, you know, defending myself, trying to prove myself. And those are my weaknesses. That's my old patterns way, way back generation after generation of low self-esteem and no love and everything else. And so, but I can tell you that, that we can heal that. Mm -hmm. With this work and with the dedication and with, you know, I've been in a niche market of raw foods, which I totally love and still believe in more today than ever before, because everyone that's totally raw are the ones that are glowing so bright that they're the ones that stick out like a sore thumb. That's all I can ever see. I mean, the, the live food women, especially, they're just, <laughs> their eyes are bright and their skin is clear and their minds are conscious. And then other people argue with me about this and that, but then they're 50 pounds overweight and they are not shining bright. So all I see is what I see. So I love live foods, but all these other aspects of life that I haven't really shared that much, maybe alluded to here and there, but daily meditation is magnificent. Exercise, getting to bed early, you know, being honest with yourself, and with others, getting out of bad relationships, getting out of a bad job, getting out of bad environments, being brave and courageous and free and finding places that have those fields of energy naturally that support your life. Because you can go into the, into the war zone of hatred and stay in love, but it's a heck of a lot easier if you're in the Garden of Eden and everyone's loving everyone, because then you can just... You don't have to do anything. It's already automatically there. You don't have to have an air purifier in your house up to your face just to get a breath of fresh air. You can, you can live in the fresh air if you make that choice. And I was talking to Tavis this morning, and we were just wondering why people do it. Why do they stay when the whole world is burning down? Why are they not making plans to go to Chile or you know Ecuador or somewhere where there's fresh air and fresh food and quiet peaceful why do we get attached to the house and to the job and to the credit card debt i mean we're attached to our credit card debt it's like it's just so strange how and i know those are just different priorities and different levels of consciousness but we both agreed you know as two dudes that have been on live foods for 20 years you know it is, it's like kind of the dead food gets you stuck. And when you're on all live foods, you're so fluid. You're able to be like, I mean, I could move out of this apartment today, you know, in one day and be moved out of here. Even with my crutches, I could do it. And I could be on a plane to somewhere else, you know, if that's what I needed to do, because that's how fluid and free that I've become. 
and a lot of the people that are more on that living foods consciousness of flexibility, you know, because there's an aliveness within the body and within the, within the mind and the consciousness that is a living consciousness of fluidity. There, that doesn't have to be so rigid. And when you see these, when you eat like the cereals and the dead foods, it's going to be a more of a solidification and less of that fluidity and light and electricity and conductivity, which allows you to say, honey, we're moving next week. We're tired of California's burning down. We can't even breathe. We need to leave because that's our priority. And it seems unrealistic, but it's not true because everyone is a master creator if they want to be. And there is infinite choices that can be made. And there are places on this earth still that are beautiful and supportive of life. It's just that we've all congregated in these places, congested them, and turned them into cancerous tumor zones where if, if, you're a, if you're a cell in a cancerous tumor, you can look down at the topographical maps and see the brown cities. And then outside of that is the nice blue and green fields, the blue ocean and the green forests. But these cities, they're little brown spots of cancerous tumors. And you're just, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but I just talk to so many people and it's like, well, there's only so far that you can go when the environment is not conducive to life. And so that's been the, one of the biggest things I've wanted to share is like, you know, and I understand three kids, a husband, you know, 17 years on a mortgage, but there is, there are ways to fast and regenerate and reactivate the potential of being more flexible, more fluid and having different priorities and looking at the fact that like, a lot of people are just dying of cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, just sickness and dysbiosis and gut inflammation. And these things with the right knowledge don't have to happen because when there's a problem, there's a solution. It's just a matter of education and really having a desire to thrive in this world. And I know it can be done and you can change anything. You can go from poverty to abundance. You can go from crappy relationships to just divine union you can go from sickness to health and you can go from depression to joy is there going to be choices that need to be made do you need to exert yourself of course you're going to have to be courageous and brave and bold and move through all the naysayers because you know a lot of us are just stuck but you may get the divine revelation that you need to do something because I am miserable, overweight, and feel like people call me and they feel like they're dying. And I hear their life and it's like, wow, 25 years in the same crappy job that you hate just to go another 10 years to get a retirement plan? I mean, you're already dead. What's the point? Go and just live your life. The treasure is inside you. I'd rather sleep in a tent or a van and breathe fresh air than live in a mansion and not have a breath of fresh air or be able to find fresh food or be able to get out into nature and be by myself to recalibrate my whole aura so that I can receive the messages of my own divine path so that every man and woman can feel their divine purpose. And then you're going to be able to have wholeness, fulfillment, happiness, and energy because you'll wake up at four in the morning excited to live and it can be done. And I, cause I'm just, you know, I am not any smarter, better, and I, I'm only blessed because I have focused on love, kindness, forgiveness, and all the divine qualities. I have done my utter best to adhere to those divine qualities, and when you do something that's unloving, you know, you can go remedy that. You can rectify that by apologizing and asking for forgiveness and promising yourself and the other that you will do your best to do better and you can keep growing and the painful experiences are the ones that you remember so especially for men i mean women need to know that men learn by making mistakes so please try to understand that about us and encourage us to go out there and make mistakes so we can grow and learn but every time we make a mistake we get chastised until we're henpecked to death and then we're paranoid to do anything and to take any risks. And then we don't have an opportunity to really grow. I mean, it's not like you want to go out and make mistakes, but you will 
because if you set your intention and the bar higher, you're going to have some learning curves. You're going to have to make some mistakes. No one's going to be an Olympic gymnast on the first day in the gym. There's going to be broken ankles. There's going to be, you know, bad diets. You go out drinking and you can't train the next day. I mean, you're going to learn all the time. And then you're like, okay, I can never drink again, you know, especially on training days. And you just learn that, you know what I mean? And you just keep learning and growing and making mistakes. And the only reason you're making those mistakes is because you've decided that you know you are capable of more and you want to see yourself evolve because that's your gift to the world is your own evolution. All the stuff we do on the outside pales in comparison to the internal transformation of you going from depression to happiness, from you going to uh, poverty to abundance. You don't even have to say anything to anyone or start a niche market or write eBooks or anything. If you do it, that feeds the field of consciousness and then that widens the path for those who wanna come behind you who are like, want to go from poverty to abundance you don't even ever need to meet that person and you are having an effect on them by doing that yourself and deciding you're going to go from poverty to abundance you're changing the world and you never have to say anything to anyone the yogi that sits in the cave is more powerful than the yogi that's up on the stage talking because he's just sitting there blasting the world with his consciousness and it's affecting the whole field. And, and those of us that are receptive can pick that up. And we feel his love from the cave and he never even comes out once in his life until he ascends. And so it's really what we become inside is our greatest gift to the world. And when we can become loving and peaceful and joyful, which isn't gonna be all the time, but more and more you can cultivate those qualities and you can be a happy human being in spite of living in the matrix, living in duality. I think as long as you keep your mind on what I call the lightless light or the Godhead, you know, the light that is beyond the light and darkness of duality, like the yin and the yang, but the, the primordial lightless light, infinite divine source. And that's what we are. That's what we all are. That's what everything is. And if we can remember that, fear will just wash away and confidence will take its place and faith and we'll have faith in that divine and we will want that divine knowledge to run our lives for us and it is much more seamless and then as soon as you get in the way it gets clunky and chunky again and then you just keep surrender 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 and it really does work out when you're trying so hard to make the money it it's not as it's not as uh you don't, I don't know. It's like the less you try just, and then you stay in a state of abundance consciousness by being generous and not clinging so hard. Like, Oh, I can't buy this cup of coffee today because I don't have the money or whatever. It's just like when you buy the cup of coffee with joy and don't think about the money, then it just opens the gate and more can flow to you. But when you're tight, the gates closed, it can't flow in. So we want to like loosen our grip. Mm. let go and flow with the divine intuition that's always trying to talk to us we want to wake that up and that's one of the reasons why i love to promote the live foods fasting and any other practice that brings you into presence whether that's breathing meditation yoga or anything else that just brings you and and gives you concentration and focus <laughs> How am I supposed to comment to that rant, man? I, ha I had like a rant. 10 things that I wanted to say. And then every time something new came on, I forgot the first one. So I, I can talk, brother. <laughs> so, um, okay, give me a second. Because I, I want to think about what's the most relevant of the 15 things that I thought of while you were talking. <laughs> So, okay. So one thing that you, you, you've touched on a few times is like, and I just wrote a long blog post about this. It's about a man or a woman being on their edge. And based on the conversation, based on what I'm hearing from you right now, it seems like you, you really value this. And what the edge means is that when someone is constantly 
penetrating their fears, constantly on the edge of their comfort zone. It doesn't matter where their edge is, right? It could be for the dude to go up to a woman in a coffee shop and say hello. It could be the dude could even go up and talk to a, a woman at the register and that could scare him and that could be his edge. Or it could be a multi-million dollar record label that somebody is getting and uh, that's their edge, you know? But based on your vibe and, and you know, and the way you speak, my opinion is that you really value the edge and that's something that that's, it's important to you, no matter where we are in life, to constantly be surfing that edge, penetrating those barriers and those ceilings and, and dissolving uh, the, the fear. And then it comes up again on a new level, comes up again on a new level, you know? So is that, is that important to you? Do you live a practice like that? Uh, the, the, it is. Uh, in fact, it's interesting that you bring that up because of the, I, that was our discussion this morning with my daughters. I call them every morning for a little reading. I'm just going to be standing and sitting because I have a back injury. So I know what it's like for you, that knee. Anyway, keep going. Um, well, I, we talked this morning about, uh, you know, just cultivating courage and not letting fear, which will immobilize you. And it'll, it'll come up, but and my daughter said, you know, so what does that look like, dad? And I was just like, well, what does courage look like? And it's like, well, the fear is there, but you just keep walking forwards anyways, because fear can come up and you leave the coffee shop and don't talk to the hot girl that you want to talk to. Or you can, you know, or you can just, you can feel the fear, you're nervous. She sees it, she thinks it's cute. If you actually do it, she'll see exactly what's going on and she'll think it's great. <laughs> She's just as shy or more shy than you are. And she likes you more than you like her, but she was never going to say anything. And you'll never know until you try it. And then the more times you go up and push the edge for the coffee shop girl pretty soon, <laughs> you just go and you just, what happens is uh, you just f finally get to a point where you just see the most beautiful woman in the whole place. And you just go right D line. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then, um, you got confidence because you don't, because you are in that space. It's not like for a lot of guys, it's the end of the world. If she says no, it'll take him three months to get up the courage to talk to another coffee shop girl. But you get used to, it's like, okay, then you think, okay, that wasn't the right one. That wasn't my divine partner. Let's move on. Let's talk. Let's go, go to the next coffee shop, you know? And so be okay with that. Right. Not being attached to the outcome. I, I was a dating coach for a little while back before I got sick. And, 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 you know, for your people on your channel, I was basically dying for three and a half years. Before that, I was actually a jiu-jitsu world champion, super successful. And then I basically was on my deathbed for three and a half years. Not actually on my deathbed, but uh, it was a fucked up experience. Uh, and I had mercury poisoning. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, what I always taught people was that the way to get the girl is to actually not care so much about getting the girl. The way to attract abundance in your life is to actually not care so much about attracting abundance in your life. And not caring is not like not wanting it, but it's like not grasping to the outcome, right? So if a, if a dude gets rejected by that woman, then it's at the end of his life, you know, versus another dude who can just take that not in a personal way and continue moving forward. But anyway, what I wanted to say was that, do you think the edge, do you think living on the edge is instrumental in terms of having health? A lot of people think these are two different things, right? People think like, oh, if I eat this diet and exercise, then I'm healthy. My opinion and my vision, the way I see the world, and especially in men, is that all of that stuff can only take us so far if we're not actually living on our edge in all of the other facets of our life. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, I guess I have different terminology. Okay. I suppose so. I mean, it's basically like I love to evolve. I yeah. have to. If I'm not evolving, I mean, I'm unhappy. If I'm not challenged with something, if I'm not working on some type of internal weakness or bettering my diet or, you know, getting more still during meditation or getting more courage and confidence in relationships or being more honest than I was the day before or, you know, be standing more in my power and just speaking what I have to speak for myself instead of worrying so much about hurting the other per person's feelings. you got to think of yourself. You can't just wipe yourself out. And so sometimes people that stand in their power and just say, 
say it like it is, the other people get hurt. But you know, those people, they'll either respect you or they'll just go away from you and not want to, uh, not want to be your friend, but you can't just, you know, you can't just cower around. So my, I think that constant evolution and constant, because you look up to like, I look up to the masters. I look up to the saints and the sages. I have a good level of, you know, consciousness, but you know, these guys, you know, they were like way up there and they inspired me, but I'm not there yet. And my friend Tavis was like, you, they had their journey and now you need to have yours. And so I'm embracing some of the things about me that are not as saintly as some of the masters that I read about, you know, and I'm accepting that and I'm more at peace. And then I think I can embrace my humanness. That's basically where I'm at right now is embracing the human experience instead of separating mm -hmm. um, divinity versus human. It's more like a divine human. It's knowing that it's eternal, knowing that the light and the love and the peace and the joy and the bliss are there and then bring it, and bringing that down into, into the human world and spreading that with your brothers and sisters and allowing God to use your hands and emanating that and being a mirror for that, for people to, um, you can upgrade people without saying anything, just by standing there mirroring back some people will be afraid, but other people will be inspired. And you can't, it's not really up to you to, to get a, 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 you know, sad when someone's like, I hate you and your raw foods. I'm going to go eat some whatever pizza with pepperoni on it. You know, I hate you. It's like, well, I, you know, you didn't do anything except just mirror to them where they are. And, or, and then the pizza and then other, those people that want to live on the edge, are going to be inspired by you and they're going to be like they're going to want to up their game like change their diet change their fitness regimen they don't want to learn how to meditate they want to do a long water fast whatever it is you know boom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah do you think that this goes back to the previous conversation the previous rant two before this do you think that uh we can win anywhere? Or do you think that we have to have a perfect environment, perfect situation? Because the reason I ask is because, you know, you were talking before about, you know, you weren't explicitly talking about Hawaii, but you were explaining how you're, you know, you're in this beautiful area and the air is fresh and all that. And, um, you know, Berkeley's nice, but it is more along the lines of a city. But some of my most badass teachers are actually in New York City. Some of the people that I would refer to in my life, and, and I've studied under a lot of people and learned from a lot of people, and, and uh, the, some of the people that I feel are the most healthy, and I don't just view health as, um, you know, like I view health as this holistic thing of how someone views life, how someone is living, how they treat other people, how they treat themselves. You, you get it. Um, but they live holistic. in New York. What, what's that? Holistic. Holistic health. Yeah. They live in New York City, and New York City is a miserable fucking place. I, I lived there for three years, and I can't win there. I know I can't win there. But do you, so do you feel like, like, some, like certain people can win anywhere, and do you feel that some of the high spirits of this planet actually need to be living in a city in order to help the people in those cities wake the fuck up? Because yeah, if everyone little. retreated, right, if everyone retreated, let's say everyone was in Hawaii or Kauai, right, you're, and, and let's say you didn't have a YouTube channel, right, you'd be touching way less people than, you understand what I'm saying? If yeah. You, if you're isolated. It's just that I suppose, sense. I mean, yeah, it's, it is, it's an interesting thing I've thought about, and there are various levels to answer that question. And it, it does depend on the subtleties. I mean, you definitely can adapt. The human organism will adapt for sure. And, but when I'm um, talking to my clients over the phone, I can't help but to think a lot of times that they just need to hear the sound of the river, to have the rain, to have the, the feet on the earth. And one of the main 
components to health is fresh air. And these are basic laws that a hundred years ago, no one ever thought of anything. There was no, there wasn't piles and piles of industrial agriculture in the air at all times, breathing in glyphosate, you know what I mean? And now it's just a more of a consideration. And I, I it, it, it has been a bit of a struggle for me. I'm kind of glad you brought this up because I'm looking more for feedback from other people um, about like, how can we really look at this? Um, you know, because these environments, for someone like me who's really sensitive and you know on the live foods 100 percent i'm gonna be way more sensitive and so i can understand like i try to give anyone a hard time because in those harsher environments you kind of need to eat heavier foods to create a denser body so that you're not just light and soot you know if you were in, in eating just the way i do you're just pure light and then you'd be just breathing and all that soot. But if you have some heavier foods, they don't, the, the soot doesn't absorb as much. And so anyone anywhere can have a good attitude and be anyone anywhere at any time, you know, in Auschwitz, you can be grateful. And it was those people that probably survived that got into that field of gratitude and looked for something to be grateful for and look for the good looked of where they can be of service and love the people around them and um and then you know have a good life i think anywhere you can do that but then there's more layers and more expansion on that into where you want to get like i'm very interested in regeneration at very high levels and so I need a certain type of environment. And then my clients call me and they don't even really have fresh water to drink or clean water to bathe in or fresh air to breathe or grass to stand on. And they're in the drywall, on the concrete, in the plastic car, off gassing. And it's these subtle things that we don't wanna be paranoid, but if we look, cause our culture and civilization is is new all this modern technology and stuff and in certain ways it's good but we have to look at the downside of it too if we're going to be educated you know the the pesticides and then the the wi-fi and the heavy metals and things like that that are like how are we going to stop autism if you look at all the factors and facets of autism how are we going to stop cancer do we want to do that and i think that collectively we haven't even started to think that way yet but in, as individuals, as you know, you're on your deathbed, you can as an individual change it around. And that's been my focus is getting the individual, you know, they'll call me from New York City, they've got tumors, and I'm just like, I know they need to go somewhere where they can just lay down and their whole nervous system can get rid of the sirens, get rid of the garbage trucks at four in the morning, because that's on their nervous system all the time. And it's like, like, this and they need to be able to go and unplug and you can go and you know if you have tumors you might have to take six months a year two years off and go somewhere and heal and that because that's going to be not only the physical toxins but the emotional toxins the energetic toxins that you need to go somewhere where you can fall apart for a while where you're not you don't have to drink coffee and eat donuts and smoke cigarettes and candy bars in order to get through this job that you have at the, at the news company that you really don't like and it's all negativity and you're all messed up and you've got tumors, you need to, like, I need to, you, so I tell my clients, you know, it's like as gently as I can at whatever level they're able to receive it. It's an intuitive process, but I'm thinking this lady really needs to go rent a cabin somewhere away from all that so she can just dissolve all of those accretions you know so it's a that's a real touchy subject so i'm not trying to tell everyone hey you and your seven kids that right, right. live in uh you know chicago and the house your grandma gave you you need to up and move and yet some of these environments people will get there's just a lot going on and, and it's and it's tough on the human organism you know they're they're very resilient and they're very adaptable but there's also 
each preceding generation is getting weaker and weaker due to our separation from Mother Earth, which will be the all-strengthening angels of the dirt and the grass and the, and, the, and the soil and the water and the wind and the light and the flowers and the birds and the sounds that the nervous system recognizes for millions of years. And now in the last hundred years, there's sirens and garbage trucks and banging and clanging and trucks driving by and so many things that, so it's kind of like sound pollution, lung pollution. And I really think that matter matters, you know, and that's been part of my success is really accepting the details and the minute without being fanatical and making it be more stressful, but trying to be as intelligent as I can and create the most propitious circumstances with my personal choices that I can for my own personal vision. Mm. Yeah, because we can't win if we're constantly at war, right? Like I know there's people who are like the chemtrails, the chemtrails, you know, I mean, I get it and it sucks and it's real. But as soon as you go into that space of like, you know, we're, we're dying, they're, they're killing us. It's almost like we have no chance, you know, and for all of this, this applies to all toxicity. There's people who I know on the whole end of the spectrum, people who literally will put all kinds of chemicals including my sister, shit, she just had a baby and she's putting drugs and chemicals, you know, onto the baby, all kinds of different bullshit products. And then there's people who are literally afraid to wash their hands with tap water, you know, when they're at a mall or something. And I, I feel that, that, you know, we have to find a healthy balance. Like we have to acknowledge that these things are happening. But as soon as we become obsessive or fanatical, the word you use, then my opinion, we, we're losing. We're just losing because we're in a war. We're activating our nervous system. We're fighting against something else. And we can't heal if we're fighting. That's, that's my sense. And I, I fought my whole life. I literally fought my whole life to be able to realize that I have no chance of surviving if I keep fighting. So what was your stance after the fighting? After the fighting? Like, Acceptance? Like, surrender? I, I had to become vulnerable. I was so scared to become vulnerable. I was so scared to admit weakness or feel weakness or feel vulnerable. You know, anyone, any, anytime someone said something to me, you know, the wrong way, I would bug out, you know? And, and that was ultimately just my own fear of being vulnerable. My own fear of, of my own fear of like, of feeling weak, you know? But what I learned throughout these past several years of healing is that, we're all super vulnerable. We're, we're five seconds away from getting hit by a car. If you love someone, you're vulnerable, right? If you have a girlfriend and you love that person and you put your heart into that person, you don't have control over what they do. That's fucking vulnerability, right? That's real vulnerability. And, the, and, and so part of life, I'm, I'm understanding just like watching you know, an animal, an animal will take long, super long naps when they're vulnerable, you know? Or, or animals are always vulnerable, you know, any, any animal in nature can get killed at any moment, you know, aside from the real top dogs. But, but, you know, embracing that vulnerability led to my dissolving and still is that dissolving of this fight of like, I have to get what I want. I have to fight for it. I have to, you know, it's, it's like the second I wake up, it's like a fight, you know, to, to survive. And um, so, yeah, the, the vulnerability for me was, and accepting it and embracing it and, uh, and not being scared of it allowed me to step out of that world. I think I lost you there for a second. Yeah, you froze up a little. Yeah, you're frozen. You there? There we go. The video is frozen, but we can keep rolling. And then if the video doesn't come back in. Huh. Your video quality just got super low. So uh, your internet's probably not doing so hot right now. Okay. 
had a couple of bars on there, so. Okay. Anyway, did you did you catch what I said, or did, did I lose you before then? I think I lo I didn't uh, catch what you said. No. You didn't catch it. Oh. Um. Anyway, vul vulnerability is is the the key thing that allowed me to to break free and continue to break free from that sort of paradigm of fight, you know, and, and, and that's, that's machismo sort of male paradigm across the world right now, which I'm finding is, is limiting a lot of male healing to, for the men to think that they need to be, you know, super, super badass and super tough all the time. And, and, and they, you know, it's like we reward that toughness and we reward like, Oh, he did it all by himself. You know, we say like, oh wow, this guy did it all by himself. But, but that's bullshit because it's always at an expense. You know, if we're if we're fighting that to that degree, we're always burning something. We're always losing some some sort of life force or, or losing our soft side or losing uh, losing love. You know. Yeah, it's nice to have a balance. Yeah. Damn, I'm I'm the quality is shit, man. I'm not sure what's actually happening because it says I've got a couple of good bars. Okay. Well, your audio is now. Your audio is coming through, but the video is choppy. So, uh, whatever. I'll just keep rolling. Okay. Uh, I'll, I, hopefully, I. Yeah, this is a new, a new internet, so it yeah. has not been good. Yeah. But yours is you have you have really good internet. It looks like. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're out here in Hawaii. It's a little, a little choppy. Yeah, we got the strong EMFs here in Berkeley. You know, I like it like that. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> the Wi-Fi doesn't even make it to my bed, so <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't mind. What's next, Josh? All right. Yeah. So uh, why don't we just sit for a second, and see what comes. So I'd like to talk about, uh, about YouTube, you know, I, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pick your brain. I'm going to get some advice for you, from you, you know, right now live on camera. So YouTube for me has been this, this interesting journey of, uh, you know, all of these different pendulum swings, you know, like I, I, sw I would swing from being radically authentic without giving a shit about what the audience thinks. And then I would also be in this mode of like only wanting to please my audience, only wanting to, to make others happy, you know? And then I've been in the middle of all of that. Um, and, um, you know, similarly with, with negative haters, I've been completely, you know, unaffected by them. And, I, and they've made me super, super sad and question what I do and question my mission, you know, for, for, for moments at a time, sometimes a day at a time. Um, if it's the right, you know, the right comment or the right email, it's just like, wow, this person hit, hit something that's alive for me right now. And, and, and ultimately, I always, I always err on the side of dismissal because uh, because of the way they approached it, right? If they're not doing it from a place of love, then I know where they are in their evolutionary journey. And then I'm like, okay, well, this doesn't feel good the way they came at me. So by default, I'm not going to take it all in. You know, I will, I will understand some, I want to look at some of the things that they're saying, but I'm not going to take that all in and take that all on. So how do you, how do you juggle YouTube personal life how do you juggle all of the attention, all of the emails, all of the messages? Um, how, d does it ever fuck you up? You know, are you ever just in this total craze and, and fr frenetic energy as a result of, of all of the attention? I'm, I'm, I want to hear your whole rant on, on YouTube and, and what, it, what it means for you and how you've, how you've evolved in YouTube. YouTube has evolved me for sure. Mm -hmm. Because it'll point out all those areas that need shored up in your own self-confidence and your own understanding of your own journey. And 
your own truth because you're going to have a different truth than other people. And, you know, there are, and, and also there are various levels because on one level, you know, you can, it, you know, there's so many different levels with which you can approach it. And that's why sometimes being a monologuing YouTuber is the hardest job in the world because if you had, if you had the person right there in front of you, you'd never say any of those things because you'd know they couldn't handle it and didn't want to hear it. And it wasn't within their field to even accept that. And so for me, what's happening lately is that my real life is so real and so divine and so filled with love and respect and service. And then over on YouTube is kind of plugging back into the matrix where it's a bit more chaotic and there's a lot of people's unresolved issues. I mean, when I can look someone in the eyes, I can see where we're going to go. And there are very few souls that I can actually talk about, you know, the real stuff. I had a conversation with a nice woman last night who was a super galactivated being from another starship. But we were talking about out-of-body experiences, kundalini, everything that gets poo-pooed. And we were talking about, like, because we both, both had all kinds of experiences, things you never talk about online. And yet, for the star children who have been fasting and doing the living foods and the children of the light, you know, these things are just par for the course, man, you know? And so when you can have those conversations in real life and meet your brothers in the spirit, because everyone's at different levels. You go to church and they have all these beliefs and then you go to the synagogue and they have that. And then you go to the college and they've got these belief systems in this field of energy. And you got to get in where you fit in. And no one's right or wrong. We're all just on a journey up to the top of the mountain because the goal of life itself is you know divine illumination like wholeness unity consciousness with itself so god is looking for itself through us and so we're all on the same journey we're just on different paths heading up to the top of the mountain some of us more slowly and some of us more rapidly and some of us have been here more in the past uh so it's a little bit challenging lately because I know that I can be of service on YouTube. Uh, living foods to someone like me, after all these years of experience and seeing what I've seen is an absolute no brainer, especially now with understanding of the microbiome. It's gonna be another 10 years or something before even the most basic common sense understanding of the microbes on the food and how that affects the gut. Can I pause you? What do you, do you think, do you think living foods is a no brainer for every person on the planet or for you? Um, in the context of, do you want to lose weight? Do you want to heal disease? Do you want to have more energy where you don't need coffee and processed sugar? Because the living energy, the laws have always been that way. And it's interesting to know that God and Mother Nature were so smart that they made provisions for cooked foods, animals, and that type of thing. And like we were saying at the beginning, what type of molecules and metabolites and genetic materials being produced by what types of food. And so I feel like the lighter that you get and the more microbial activity that you have producing all of these beneficial uh, metabolites like serotonin and dopamine through the uncooked plant fiber, you have a lot more happiness, joy, energy, clarity, and a connection with the earth so that your your so that the roots can go deep. When the when the gut is connected to the earth, you can root into a practical spirituality. And then those roots can deep deep go deep in to the earth and then as your consciousness expands in the light you can root in through natural foods unaltered 
and then the branches can reach up towards the sun of God. So the roots go down into the earth through mother and the branches go up to the heavenly father. And then the fruit is produced and it is good fruit and it is ripe fruit and it is sweet and it is abundant. And that is the fruit of your offering of who you have become. And you can see that you can transform lives by sinking deeply into the earth and the disconnection from the cooked foods and the processed foods that have none of that microbial activity. So it has none of the information or the light that transfers information. So humans are kind of just blobs right now, sort of kind of alive just because they have these genetic codes that give them a certain amount of time. But within that, they can express all these other amazing uh, codes as well of energy and consciousness that would be associated with like the different, the different diets. So I think all human beings would thrive on living foods, but the thing is, is you would really have to look at your environment. And then what happens is it's a constant state of evolution. And when, as you get lighter and cleaner and detox you're detoxifying the pain the pain of humanity the pain of the generations before you your grandparents all these trajectories of abuse and drugs and drinking and sadness and depression and their disconnect from the earth as these generations have gotten further and further away you know and so you're healing the, these deeply embedded patterns of pain and ignorance so that you can and when you go on the living foods and you go on this path of healing and awakening and illumination you're on a heck of a journey you're going to have to it's going to stuff's going to come up it's going to come up it's going to come up and it needs to be dealt with but you can take painkillers you can smoke weed all day and you can drink all the time and you can stuff your face full of processed foods and keep yourself suppressed or you can grow the light within you cultivate that and as you do that's that light is going to burn bright and it's going to force all of the darkness in you to come up to be looked at and it's an uncomfortable thing and so people go raw for three months three weeks six months whatever and the lightness that's produced is too much the changes and so believe me after almost 20 years on raw foods it's still happening, but now at a much more accelerated level to where I'm still healing. And I know that people, that's one of the things on the YouTube, you're still healing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, I'm not Jesus yet. And they're like, you'll never be Jesus. That's your belief. You know, don't put that on me. I believe we need to do what Jesus said. Don't just believe in a bunch of theology, but do what Jesus said. Read the Sermon on the Mount read the Beatitudes and do it. And then you'll see when you cultivate the simple teachings of Jesus, that light will grow in you. And so it's a lot of impracticality, really, you know, in the world of just, it's not, it's, there's no groundedness. There's no pragmatism. It's not even manifesting itself. You should see the joy. You should see the health. You should see the fruits of the teachers that you watch. You should see them producing fruits. You should see them um, inspiring transformation and change via their energy field, consciousness, and teachings, you know? So what are the fruits being produced? And are those the type of fruits that you want to produce yourself? And then you follow that person. Mm. It's e easy to say. There's so much saying. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why, like at the beginning, you said, that I do have so much respect is because I've the truth was the truth back then and it isn't changed for me. If it changes, I'll change. But I started off from a really good platform on a really high level and it just, I'm looking for it to change. And I didn't, it wasn't just like, Oh, well this, you know, I could have more viewers if I went cook vegan or I could have more viewers if I went back to carnival or something like that. But I, am thriving on live foods and there's still so much more potential to activate 
more light, more clarity, more lightness, and more purity in everything that I do in my, in my diet, in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit. And that's what, that's what I love is purity and clarity. And so, of course, I'm going to want to eat pure, unaltered, organic, fresh as local possible food that's going to give me that energy because you have the information but you have to have the light to transmit that information through the system so that you can be illuminated and a luminescent being and that so that your essence can transmit itself out into the universe and you can be a blessing to others but if you're not conducting that energy you can look at it as a cellular level on the endocrine level and the nervous system if the energy is not flowing you're going to have to use stimulants every day to stimulate your heart, stimulate your adrenals, stimulate your brain with tasty foods and high sugars and everything else. And pretty soon, once you get nourishing electrical foods, you're less, you need less stimulants because you've got that true energy. And it's so much better than the ups and downs of the cigarettes and the coffee and the chocolate and the tea and the sugar and the meat and the alcohol and everything else that we use to get through our society. And we can eat these simple, plain, nourishing foods. And then we have this nice, controlled, balanced energy. It's not too high. It's not too low. You just get up, go to bed early, wake up early, and you're just, it's, it's taken me a long time, but I always wanted to be stable in my energy. And I had to pull out stimulants of all types. And now I've found for myself, and I know this is constitutional as well, but as a vata pitta, you know, I just need plain, basic, simple, unseasoned food um, in the most basic. And one of the things I think is key is the, um, is the fiber, the, the diversity of the fiber. I mean, these, you know, tribes and other uh, indigenous cultures that have like really good health and then it's really diverse microbiome for high immunity and strong health and vitality and virility they have these huge range of microdiversity. they get 100 to 150 grams of fiber a day the average american gets 10 or 15 grams of fiber most of it isn't even natural raw plant fiber so it's already starting to ferment before it even leaves the small intestine and that's where you get the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and the yeasts and the fungus and everything else because you have to have that plant fiber that's the cellulose that makes it all the way to the gut because the gut microbiome is where all of the um all of the byproducts of consciousness are produced and so you really want to have a super healthy colon that's got a lot of fermentable plant fibers in there and then you're not even you your pure microbial information and energy you're not even feeding yourself you're you're actually like three times removed from the food the microorganisms break it all down transmit it into the bloodstream and then send it to the cells and then the mitochondria take those molecules and make atp so you're two or three times removed away from the food and so it's really a matter of instead of thinking about feeding yourself and all this nutritional garbage, that's just a total waste of time. In my opinion, all of it is just a waste. It's really just the light. That's the main thing because then the information that is being chewed up and broken down and fermented and absorbed can actually be transmitted. Otherwise nothing can get through the cell and the, and the waste matter can't get out of the cell. So you want to have, you want to be as fresh as a baby all your life long. So you wouldn't feed a baby. What would you feed a baby? You wouldn't feed it all this crazy crap that us adults eat that we adapt to, but we build up all these hard mucus layers so that we can absorb all these harsh foods. And when we start eating simple foods, plain foods like a little baby, our tissues can get soft again. Our nervous system can calm down and we can start creating like really hydrated, soft, beautiful, flexible tissues that has a lot of electrical potential and a high level of healing potential. And you can flush away all those toxins that are physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual toxins 
and you can get you can get free from all these diseases. It can be done. I'm going to challenge you here because uh, because I know you can handle it, and I, and I know you won't take it personally. Um, okay, for me, the I did raw foods for eight months. And um, I was actually living in the Amazon jungle and in the mountains of Peru and um, didn't have access to as wide range of stuff that you probably have access to in Hawaii. But nonetheless, I tried the raw foods, right? I was very, very sick. Um, I, was, I had severe, severe anxiety, panic, depression, fatigue, all kinds of crazy stuff. And raw foods after about four months really fucked me up. I, I felt very ungrounded. I felt, um, I felt disconnected from my body. I felt uh, like it, it was crossing the line between detox reaction and something that I didn't like, you know, something deep inside that, my, that I didn't like, you know, whether it was my soul or whether it was my animal, you know, because I believe we, you know, we're both, as you alluded to, it's not the separation of spirit and human, we're the angel and the animal, right? So for me, uh, I was, and t at this today, I still am, it could change tomorrow, certain that a raw food diet was not conducive for my growth. Maybe, maybe uh, right now, right? I, I don't want to say you're wrong because I really, I really don't fucking know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone really knows. Maybe you do though. <laughs> but uh I, I feel like uh, I just don't know the ultimate truth for all beings. If there's one truth for all beings, if it's a different truth for many different people. So I'm curious as to what your opinion would be. Let's say I was a client of yours and I was like, dude, I can't fucking do this raw food thing. It makes me have no sex drive. It makes me disconnected. It makes me feel ungrounded. Um, what, what would your answer be to me? Well, I mean, I would ask you a million questions. First. Yeah, I get I it. I get it. And I always yeah. get to the, I always find out what it really was. Okay. You know? Okay. And it's never the food. It's, so it's never the food. It's always other things, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Because um, I actually have, like, I've been 100% raw, and my, uh, my sex drive is um, very, very good, to say the least. Yeah. And so that's not an issue. The energy. Uh, so I, I understand, but I know that I just stuck with this because it really hit me hard that um, the living foods, it just, I changed in one day after reading one book and changed my entire life. Mm -hmm. It just reminded me of like where I left off in my last life. And so I was very determined to um, make, understand the living foods and it is a it's a transition period there are a lot of um transitions that need to take place within the system and again one of them is microbial because you're going to be born with the um inoculation microbes that your mother had so if she was eating meat and dairy and things like that you're going to be inoculated with those microbes. And as that system is transferring over, as those microbes are not being fed, they're going to be producing um, these metabolites again through their expression as they're dying off because they're not being fed. And it's a very uncomfortable process. Parasites are incredibly intelligent creatures who are much um, older than we are. And they don't just go away easily. And they're at the top of the food chain, especially for the meat-eating parasites. They, um, they're the first. They're the most. They're the, they want their, they will give you hell every which way but loose. They'll crawl around your body. They'll crawl through your brain. You know, the worms and the parasites will crawl everywhere looking for anything. If you go, I'm on a vegetarian diet now, they're mad as hell. And that's why the fasting is really the only way. And breaking through those barriers as those microbes die off and the system resets. And then you can go back to, and then it says in the gospel of peace, then you go back to those living foods 
and you rebuild the microbiome and you never have any more cravings anymore. And it's so, it's a very, you know, I'm not saying I have all the answers either, bro, but I've thought about this a lot because I just want to help and it's my job. My mission is to keep living foods and fasting alive on planet Earth so that that does not die for those who can use that information and knowledge. Um, and so I don't give anyone a hard time, dude. People get mad at me. I cook food for everyone. I make meat for people. You know what I mean? I don't eat it. You know, I don't eat the cooked food, but I'm just here to serve everyone. And I, you know, if my daughter wants cheese pizza, I'm not going to scream at her for not being vegan enough. I mean, it's just not, that is not what I do. I live by example. I try to share knowledge like that. Um, as far as like understanding, I've seen, you know, 85, 90% of the people have to go back because they're not feeling well because the, the microbes are just, they're not having it. And they send signals up your spine and the microbes are the consciousness of your body. I mean, what you really are is 99.999% empty vacuum space. That's what you are. The microbes are the consciousness within the body. And they're, they're starting to find a microbiome in the brain. There's microbiome in the breast, esophagus, you know, in the gut, of course. They're probably even going to find a heart microbiome, an armpit microbiome. I mean, it's getting more and more subtle, our penis technologies. Microbiome. What's that? A penis microbiome. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's already, you know, the, the, the uh, genital microbiome is already well established, especially the vaginal microbiome. But the men also have a testicular microbiome, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and so these are all different areas of microbiology. So it's all microorganisms. That's all we are is one big old sack of all these tiny little microscopic organisms that have their own consciousness, their own genetic material. So we're only 1% human, we're 99%, and people can't believe this, but it's well-established scientific fact. Now, science is always evolving too, but we are 99%. Like, we need to understand that these little microbes Parasites, worms, fungus, yeast, mycelium, bacteria, everything, they're a huge part of the puzzle. And if you get very conscious, you can actually grow a garden, but not without a lot of discomfort, man. I went through a lot to get to this point where I am now 100% live foods. I have vitality and virility. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning easily and effortlessly. I use no stimulants. I don't even season my food. You know, and, and I'm not trying to say I'm better than anyone or make anyone feel bad or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, this has been my journey to so I can live a very balanced, stable, simple life. But I, I have a very magical life. I have a very powerful ability to manifest anything I want really, really rapidly. And I think that that comes from all I can say is one of the main hubs was my diet and using that as a mirror for looking at all these other aspects of my life. But the vitality and the virility and the energy is most certainly there. And, and it was a big change. And when I did the 40-day water fast, that was a huge shift in my gut as well as my finances, as well as my relationships, as well as having all these incredible dreams of getting rid of resentments that I couldn't do consciously, but only unconsciously in my sleep while deep in a fasting state, whereas I able to clean the stuff off my nervous system and so many other aspects of my life. And I had divine guidance from the most high on what's next in my life. So getting clear, clearing all that out of there and removing the microbial activity, you're just living on breath. And all that microbial activity dies down. Because when you stop feeding them, everyone goes into hibernation. And all of the weaker ones die off. And then inside your appendix is a seed bank of microorganisms. And you do get back to the original uh, microorganisms that you got from the inoculation of during your mother. And then uh, throughout your life, you built up 
through environments and through the type of food that you ate. And then the appendix has a, it's a seed bank of all those microorganisms. And then when you take antibiotics or whatever, you wipe it all out or you have diarrhea or get some kind of food poisoning or do a long water fast, that little appendix reseeds. And then what you can do is you can become in control of what you want to grow in your garden. Most of us never get past that point, and it seems like the microorganisms and the parasites, they are going to continue to, because there's always, the, I was vegan, but I had to eat a piece of sushi once every month or two, and I felt instantly better the minute I took a bite. Now, what does that tell you? I've heard that story a million times. The first bite of meat I took, my health was better. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, right? In other words, they knew what was coming, and they finally were like, yes. They are pure consciousness as well. And they are a huge part of our consciousness. And so when we, we're going to begin to understand this more and more as time goes on and how big of a role that that plays in the ability of you to want to be in control of your diet because you may want to eat the diet of a yogi, which is what I do. I eat the diet for yoga, which is a calm, peaceful, sattvic diet so that I'm just calm, simple, centered, and not overly stimulated. I don't want to stimulate my, I don't want to stimulate my testicles. I want to nourish them for that, for that chi, for that prana. There's a difference between um, testicles being stimulated by spicy foods and things like that, as opposed to being nourished by like avocados, macadamia nuts, sunflower seeds, and fruit. And so, the, 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 the yogi wants to be just calm and peaceful, and that's the sattvic diet. Then you have the more the rajastic diet, which is going to be more like warriors, CEOs. So there's nothing, I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. I just have to live by my preference, which always was in alignment with more illumination and more evolution of spirit. And then below that, so the rajastic diet is more like chicken and um, you know spices and fowl and things like that. And then the Tasmic diet is more lower. The like grains. Lethargy, yeah. sluggishness. It's for like the, the peasants, right? The workers? Uh, no, the Tasmic diet mm -hmm. is more like um, lethargy. Okay. Sl Lost you there. Foods. Uh, losing you brother you know things like that. and so you can go with the tasmic diet which is like overweight and then there's the rajastic diet which is more the warriors the athletes and the ceos and then you've got the the yogis the saints the masters and the mystics who just are calm peaceful whose work is stillness calmness poise peace clarity centeredness you know so it depends on what you want. And when it comes to healing, you need that spiritual energy because something in you, you weren't paying attention. You, you weren't paying attention and you had some issue like you couldn't be vulnerable. Well, that's going to eventually that's going to kill you. Right. And when you tap into that and you go into that and allow that vulnerability, you take the pressure cooker lid off, you know, same thing with like, someone with tumors or someone with cancer. They're just, their body's trying to tell them something for a long time. Like, hey, pay attention to me, ding dong. And they have, it has to manifest as some big black spot of energy that's not flowing because you're totally ignoring your own inner. And so that spirituality is going to help you to awaken and be resensitized so that you can pay attention and tap into what it is that you have been ignoring. And that's what some people get the cancer diagnosis and they go to work, very few actually. And some people get the cancer diagnosis, fall prey to the fear, get burned, cut and poisoned to death and they're dead within a couple of years. And other people use it as the greatest gift ever. Like, oh my God, I have to leave my husband because he's been abusing me emotionally for 19 years and I'm dying from it, you know? And I'm not listening to myself. I don't love this man anymore. And you're all guilt and shame and obligation. Well, what's that going to do? You might as well just eat tumors if you're going to have all of those emotions inside of you and those qualities. So we really want to have faith in 
have a more expanded view of the eternal nature of our being and then is important in our spiritual family. Losing you. I'm losing you. Can you can you see me now? Splice that together. What? Are, are we going to splice all that together? Yeah, I keep pausing the recording and then resuming it when I lose you. Yeah, and you'll just tack it together or what? Yeah, yeah, that's easy. Man. Conversation. Anyway, we're back. Sorry, guys. Okay. Dan's got to get his Wi-Fi upgraded. I'll get better. <laughs> um, but, um, okay, are there any... Are there any last you know words or pieces of advice that you want to give to people um where guys leave a comment if you want to see him on again i know i know i want him on again so actually i'm going to have him on again no matter what you say but but uh let me know if you <laughs> if you want him on again and uh what you thought of the show but but Dan, is there anything that you want to tell your folks my folks uh, any last piece of advice aside from raw foods till death do we part <laughs> that's just, just my um that's my dharma you know the <laughs> live foods so everyone's just gonna have to put up with that but um other than that it's easy to love it's easy to love you all no matter what you do or what you eat or where you live or what you think what color your skin is your religious preference because i see the light in myself so it allows me to see the light in everyone and i i with the life i've lived I ain't never gonna be able to judge anyone ever. And so my, I'm gonna continue to love. I'm gonna continue to serve. I'm gonna continue to purify myself in the way that I see it. And I'm gonna continue to work on and do everything I can to have mental clarity. Because purity of my heart and clarity of my mind is really, really important to me. It means the world to me. And I want to transmit that. But whatever qualities that you're attracted to, I would say adhere to those and five years from now, 10 years from now, 20, 30, till, till you'd leave this place, adhere to those divine qualities that mean a lot to you, whether it's just, you know, confidence or courage or faith or love or any of it, whatever it is that you want to see in your life and what you want to be in this world, just keep coming back to that. And you'll see its opposite arise, but you just keep cultivating that positive, cultivating those divine qualities. And you will see, I can tell you of a truth in my own experience, those divine qualities will turn into magic for you because you will be that. And it, will, it won't be something you have to put out effort to, to do to serve. You will, you'll become an automatic autopilot servant of the people around you and you will look for ways to be of service instantaneously love will be spontaneous it won't be this hard push that you got to do like for me it was very intellectual I, it's, is this the loving thing to do and after all these years my heart is really opening up and we're talking we're talking 20 years into this my heart is finally blossoming and when your heart blossoms you just magnetize people you magnetize money, you magnetize fun, adventures, happiness, and people want to be around you. So just keep on, you know, releasing um, and, and kind of letting go of the heaviness and the darkness and the sadness and the pain and do everything you can to be the best and brightest human being that you can do and, and however you see fit. And that's going to be you know, you're going to be living up to your ideal. And when you live up to your ideal, then you're going to be full and then you're going to be filled. And my ideal I share with you here. And then you can glean from that what you want. But it's not really that you live up to my ideal. It's what that you live up to your ideal. It's because if you don't, foot. Lost you, Dan and the knowledge. Aho. Boom. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Okay, everybody who's watching this video, go to uh, the info description and you'll find a link to Life Regenerator's YouTube. He's been doing it for 10 years and he's got three, 340,000 subscribers, he's killing it, and uh, busts out awesome, awesome content. And um, yeah, amazing, amazing to have you on, Dan. Hey, thanks, Josh. Um, your channel is uh, going to be below my video here um, on the YouTube. Yeah. Yep. The Detox Dude is my channel, but there'll be a link there. Cool. All righty, All right. Well, thank you, Josh, for holding space and uh, being patient while I ramble on and do what I do. Beautiful. That's why I got you on here. Well, take care over there, bro, and keep that light burning bright. Thank you, man.